Hi guys, this is John from Meatistics University, and this is Seasoning and Additives 201 Deer and Wild Game Rinse. Most people know that the best practice when you get a deer, elk, or any wild game is to clean it and quickly get it into a fridge to bring down the internal temperature of the carcass below 40 degrees. It's especially true on really hot days. By its nature, wild game has a higher chance of carrying harmful bacteria and microbial growth that can make you sick. However, we all know it's not always possible to follow best practices. You might be way out in the field or you might want to take your big old buck for someone else to see before you begin processing it. While this isn't always going to cause you any issues, you are giving harmful bacteria more time to grow during this stage. In the field, it can be really difficult to control your environment. One thing that you can do to slow down the growth of bacteria and mold is to lower the pH of the carcass. Acidic environments make it harder for most bacteria to survive, or at least it's going to slow their rate of growth. Deer and wild game rinse can be a big help here. Aside from the citric acid, which is used to achieve a lower pH, it also has sodium benzoate, which is a bacteriostatic and a fungostatic. So it's a chemical agent that helps stop the growth of bacteria and fungus. It also has sodium bisulfate, which actually can help prevent oxidation, so your meat won't turn as brown as quickly. Now I know a lot of people who think they can take a look at a piece of meat and tell whether it's spoiling or not. While there might occasionally be some visual cues, very often there aren't any. I sprayed one of these pieces of meat with deer and wild game rinse and the other I sprayed nothing. Then I used a vacuum bag and sealed them, but I didn't pull any vacuum. I wanted there to be some air in there. This allowed me to leave them out for long periods of time without stinking up the entire building. At this point, these have been sitting out at room temperature for two weeks in a sealed bag. And as you can see, there aren't really showing any extreme signs of having spoiled. No major discoloring or mold growth. One thing you can see on the meat we did not spray is it does have some white slimy mold or something growing on it. Now the meat we did spray with the deer and wild game rinse doesn't look slimy and it doesn't appear to be growing anything at all on it. And these have been sitting out for, like I said, over two weeks. Now neither of them are safe to eat, but it doesn't hurt to have that extra level of protection, which is provided by the acidic environment from the spray. Deer and wild game rinse is inexpensive. You mix eight ounces to a gallon of water. So you'd have a full gallon of spray for around $3.50. If you pre-mix a batch of this in a squirt bottle, you can give yourself a little extra level of protection by spraying it on the carcass everywhere. You wanna pay really special attention to the wound area. For a 32 ounce bottle like this, all you need to mix in is two ounces of that deer and wild game rinse to give you the correct concentration. So for any hunter, I would absolutely recommend that you add some deer and wild game rinse just to your bag. Have it in there, have it ready to go. It's gonna keep it a little bit safer while it's on its way to either your processor or back to your house for you to process. As always, remember to like, comment, and subscribe and visit waltonsinc.com and meatgistics.com to find everything but the meat. Thanks for watching, I'm John with Meatgistics University and I'll see you next time. Subscribe to Walton's YouTube channel to watch more amazing videos or shop at waltonsinc.com to find everything but the meat, check out our latest sales and giveaway video here, or watch another hand-picked video by clicking here.